Hey what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So Battlefield 4 is one of the most beloved entries of the whole franchise. Some of my best days playing Battlefield, I was in Shanghai destroying the skyscraper, capturing one site after the other in Goldmut Railway and blasting through the tunnels and hallways of Lucker and it's like there was something magical with Battlefield 4. Something that provided a connection between the player and the game to the point where I still have flashbacks over a decade later. By the way, time flies, it's almost been 11 years now. So the question is, with the next Battlefield game going back to the roots and all the buzz around it, could it reimagine the magic of Battlefield 4 and if so, how exactly? What are the key features of Battlefield 4 that could be implemented in the upcoming game to make Battlefield great again? That's simply the topic we're going to discuss today, so without further ado, let's do this. Variety, in my opinion, is the core of what they should be focusing on. Now, this goes really deep because of how well it was done in Battlefield 4. Even the base game maps of Battlefield 4 were made to impress and entertain. Now, just remember Locker and Siege of Shanghai. Look how different these maps are in terms of environment and playstyle. One of them being huge, with open spaces for vehicles and a skyscraper to destroy, and the other one a rather small map, but filled with chaos and explosions for those who wanted it. Battlefield 4 had a total of 33 maps, which is just crazy to think of, and behind every single one of them was this mindset of variety. On the other hand, you could never feel bored with weapons simply because you had a ton of options. So many weapons that making guides on them for content creators was an actual challenge. Combine that with vehicles and especially naval vehicles that are set to make a return in the new Battlefield game. So if these guys want to impress the audience, in my opinion, variety is one of the key elements because it was taken away from the community since 2021 with the release of Battlefield 2042. I'm pretty sure if you are a Battlefield player and you're just a little bit into guns, you can name plus 20 assault rifles right now that you'd like to see in the next game. I'm pretty confident that you know what type of maps do you want exactly. Simply said, the variety of the game, and of course, followed by Battlefield 1, has set the standards so high that the mediocre Battlefield game can't satisfy the community anymore, and that's something they need to be aware of. Having a goal is another very important part of a multiplayer game like Battlefield. You see, simply winning a match in Battlefield isn't that satisfying. I am a Battlefield player, and so are you probably, so let's be honest here. Winning in Battlefield is fun and all, but it's nowhere near as satisfying as it is in a game like Rainbow Six Siege or even Warzone, I don't know, Counter-Strike. The reason for that is Battlefield has never been considered a competitive game in any way, shape or form, and rightfully so, because it just isn't. And that being said, since you don't get awarded for winning with like a title or a number commonly referred to as a rank, you need to have other aspects to make you want to go back and grind. Grind is the perfect word here in my opinion. There has to be a goal to grind for in any multiplayer game and that's something in Battlefield 4 never disappointed me with. Never. Not even once. And the reason for that lies in the assignments part. Now if you don't remember, assignments were like small achievements that were often pretty hard to do and there were just tons of them for different playstyles and most of the times they made you play with a certain weapon or a combination of weapons, get a certain amount of kills with them, use different vehicles, do certain things and you could even like track them or prioritize them in the battle log. It was a form of making a goal for the players so they always have something to do while enjoying the game itself. This is not only good to have but in terms of psychology it's even necessary. Simply said, human beings need to have something to fulfill. So if the assignments return, if we keep having the T1 masteries just like Battlefield 2042, which is another form of having to grind for something or maybe even a new way of doing it, it would be great and it would give some depth and meaning to an already enjoyable experience. Map design was another very bold and impactful part of Battlefield 4. I can't really remember a map of that game that I hated. There were bad maps, but I never hated any one of them. It's like, I really hate exposure in 2042. I just, I can't stand it. I really can't play it. So there was something with every map that made them unique in a way that she just couldn't hate them. Now for the next game, we know that it will be based on 64 player matches, which will definitely have a positive impact on map design, since they don't have to be super big just to fit. Also Battlefield 4 had a strong bond between large scale maps and smaller maps with integrity in mind, and what I mean by that is simply just maintaining balance so the players with different playstyles could all enjoy a single map. A solid example of this is Siege of Shanghai again. Great for vehicle players with large spaces between sites and also great for infantry because the sites were made in a way that vehicles alone just couldn't hold them for too long and as a result everyone was happy. Looking at the latest maps DICE and other teams have designed, it's obvious that they are going in the right direction. I absolutely have no doubt about that, especially with Redacted and Reclaimed, and that's the mindset they should be 
carrying with themselves to the next game. Also, Battlefield 4 provided Levolution events for almost every map. Levolution, for those of you who might not know, is simply an event most likely triggered by players in a specific way and sometimes happening automatically that could change the dynamics of the map, sometimes even change the shape of a site or change the weather in a cr like critical way, something like that. A simple example for this is the skyscraper in Siege of Shanghai that would completely change site seaside probably. Yeah, I remember it was seaside and also the flow of the game. These events had given every map a unique taste to the point where sometimes you had to change play styles in order to adapt to the new environment. It's said that the next game will probably have the same approach towards the Levolution and that's good news, especially with the new next generation destruction system, which is our next point to talk about. Destruction. It's always been a part of what Battlefield is. I would even argue that it defines Battlefield in a way. Maybe it's gone extinct in the past couple of years, but back in the day, especially when COD and Battlefield were true competitors, everyone knew Battlefield as a game where you could destroy a building with some C4s or RPGs. In my opinion, destruction in Battlefield experienced a peak with Battlefield 1, but given the innovation that Battlefield 4's destruction had, and I would say it was truly beyond its time, it stands out as one of the best aspects of Battlefield 4. As long as people remember Battlefield franchise, that skyscraper collapse will be an iconic event in the history of this franchise. Now, you might think that among all the priorities, why destruction? Well, the reason is, if you want to return to the roots, then destruction needs to be there. The lack of a proper dynamic destruction system is so obvious in a game like Battlefield 2042 that it hurts the experience as if you're not playing a Battlefield game, and I mean it when I say it. Pretty sure a lot of you guys can relate to this, especially if you have a bit more experience with Battlefield. So, a proper destruction is non-negotiable, and DICE knows that pretty well. Therefore, they are already working on it, and they keep repeating it every now and then. It's like, hey, we're working on a new destruction system every single time they say something about the next game. This phrase, it's always there. You just see it everywhere. It's because they know how important it is for Battlefield to have destruction. It's it's really important. Class-based system is not even a Battlefield 4 unique feature, but since we as Battlefield players are going through some dark days, even that has become a standard. Four class system is a confirmed feature for the next Battlefield game, and we do know for a fact that we won't be getting specialists, which is just damn good news. However, how they implement that is still a matter of discussion, and I believe doing it wrong is literally just harder than doing it right. I mean, how hard would it be to just do another Battlefield 4 class system? Assault, Engineer, Support, and Recon, and that's it. Each of them had specific duties and unique abilities. Simple as that. A proper server browser is literally just crucial for the next game. 2042 brought AI bots because of its matchmaking system, and soon later, those AI bots became a huge issue since we had bot lobbies, the matchmaking system was corrupted, sometimes you couldn't find a proper lobby to play in, and the list of issues goes on and on. The simplest solution to all of this is a good old server browser, so people can find each other, populate the server, vote for their next map, and just make things easier for themselves by playing against actual players instead of AI bots who know where you are the second you spawn. Who would have thought that one day we might be discussing this or even worse, putting it in the wish list? That's why I'm telling you that we're going through some dark days. Gunplay and movement. Now, some of you watching this video might disagree, but I believe the grounded, slowish gameplay of Battlefield 4 was something else, and in my opinion, it was awesome. Of course, it wasn't that slow, but when you compare it to Battlefield 5 or 2042, then it can be considered a slow game. Nevertheless, in my opinion, that was the best movement pace I've experienced with Battlefield. Not too fast in arcade, but not super slow and terribly realistic at the same time. In terms of gunplay and sound effects, I made a video comparing Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 2042 in terms of weapons and sound quality. That video will pop up on the top right corner. Make sure to check it out after watching this one. Anyone with a functional brain gives Battlefield 4 the win. I mean, the sound of those weapons is just beyond this world. You feel the aggression, you feel the power and the kick of the weapon through your headphones. Also, one important mechanism of Battlefield 4 was tap firing, which is now faded in a game like 2042. Tap firing was so important that you needed to actually train for it. Otherwise, you would be crushed by people who mastered it. It was simply a deal breaker and therefore you needed the skill. In a game like 2042, guns are way easier to control and because of that, a lot of new players can learn how to shoot in just a day or two, so there's basically little skill gap when it comes to shooting skills in 2042. Back in the days of Battlefield 4, that wasn't the case, and you could tell how experienced a player is just by watching them shoot. Generally speaking, in terms of gunplay, gameplay, and sound effects, the next Battlefield
Battlefield game should heavily be inspired by Battlefield 4. And lastly, I would like to give some love to the story campaign of Battlefield 4. Many believe that Battlefield 4's single player campaign was a downgrade compared to Battlefield 3. I have to be honest, I think that's just true. Battlefield 3's campaign was awesome, but I gotta say, I really enjoyed playing Battlefield 4's as well. The next Battlefield game has a confirmed single player campaign, and it's not being developed by just one studio, but it's being developed by Motive and Criterion at the same time. Now, two studios working on a single player part of a large scale multiplayer game might sound a little bit overkill, but if only they could pull it off, that campaign would be a ridiculously good one. However, I still believe somewhere along the lines of Battlefield 4's campaign when it comes to the single player should be enough, but I believe they can always aim higher for something better like Battlefield 3 or even Bad Company 2's single player. Only time can tell. So here you have it guys, 8 qualities of Battlefield 4 that the next Battlefield game needs to have in order to really return to the roots. If you think I'm missing something, you make sure to comment down below. Even if you think there are features from other Battlefield games that should be fitted in the next game, the comment section is your way to let me know what you think. Also, if you like this video and want more news around the Battlefield franchise, this channel is definitely the place for you, so make sure you subscribe and not miss out. Thank you all guys for watching, and until next time, stay cool.